I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about a small project that I've been working on, share my workflow, and would love to hear any comments or suggestions as it relates to what I'm doing. So this is our high school football stadium that's currently under construction. It's about a $15 million project. And earlier this year, I started tracking the progress uh, using my DJI Inspire One. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I've mapped larger areas up to 200 acres using a wing. But in this case, this construction project is about 20 acres. So I wanted to do it with something smaller, a little bit more compact. And you can see from this past weekend, they're starting to do some concrete work. So I'm excited about following the progress and making these maps available online. And in this video, I wanted to share my current workflow for those of you that might want to do something similar. The app that I found to be the most user-friendly is made by Drones Made Easy. They have this app called Maps Made Easy. It will work with your P3. In my case, I'm flying the Inspire One and it has done a great job. It takes a lot of the thought process out of actually having to worry about your camera exposure. I've done a lot of previous videos that talk through exposure settings, your ISO, shutter speed, all of that. And Maps Made Easy takes care of that for you. And I've seen really good results using the app. Here is a screenshot that I took when flying this past weekend. You can see some different information here. This purple circle is our home location where we take off from. This green dot is the beginning of the flight path. Going over the stadium area and then ending here, it will ultimately come back to the purple dot, hover, and then you can take control. If you're not familiar, you'll have to switch into F mode to begin your autonomous flight and then switch back into P mode to take control. Each one of these purple dots represents a photo being taken and the orange dots represent the bounding area. So you actually define these by tapping on your tablet and you can drag and rotate uh, this flight path area. So really handy. You have all sorts of data over here. Now right now I'm flying relatively slow. I could get away with flying a lot faster than five meters a second. You also have camera preview down here. You can tap this little plus sign to make it bigger. It goes out to about double the size it currently is. So that's useful if you just want to see if your exposure settings are okay. This mission takes about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit less. And during that process, I'm just keeping an eye on it in case I need to take control and bring it home. You can see here that the mission has been completed noted by this red dot here and the aircraft is this red triangle. It will fly back home to the purple location hover and then I can take control and land. The result of our mission is about a hundred photos and let me just demonstrate something as you can see here I'll just page through some of the photos and the spacing is quite nice. You can see that I normally try to fly anywhere between 11 and 2 p.m. just to make sure that sun is right over the top of the subject being mapped. Otherwise, you'll see a lot of shadowing in the trees and that makes it more difficult for the software to stitch together. Now, here you can see we're getting near the end of the first pass. And what is awesome about this software is that once that happens, it will actually stop taking any photos and then wait until the next pass begins. So that's a really useful feature. This is a visual of what I was just talking about. You can see the Inspire One flying towards the end of the first path. It will turn around and then head down the second path. So I'm just really impressed with the efficiency of the flight path. If you've flown a wing before, you'll know that you need a lot more room to turn around. Here are the photos loaded into PhotoScan Pro. You can see that there's nice equal spacing. Let me turn off the camera and you can see the stitched results in the textured model. Now what we'll do next is go ahead and export this to an ortho mosaic that we can ultimately overlay on a Google map. 
So we'll go to export ortho mosaic. We'll leave the defaults. We'll get a nice TIFF export. Now here is our geo TIFF output. This file is about 550 megabytes. So if you've ever worked with TIFF files before, you know that they can get large. That's ultimately a function of how much area you're covering. As I zoom in, this flight was about 60 meters above ground level. So the resolution here is pretty incredible. You can see quite a bit of detail as I zoom in. Now let me go ahead and demonstrate how to convert this to a format that we can overlay into Google Maps. We'll use the GDAL tools to convert our GeoTIFF to uh, tiles for uh, Google Maps. So let me just show you a command it's called GDAL info. And these tools are completely free to download and install. So be sure to check them out. So you can see that if I run the GDAL info command, it'll get, give us information about the stitched ortho mosaic. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run GDAL to tiles, give it a zoom level, and normally I'll go from 15 to 22, give it my TIFF file, and you can see that it's generating the base tiles. The GDAL to tiles command is done processing, and what you'll notice after that's run is here is our input file, the TIFF. It'll create a folder with our different tiles. This is zoom level 15 all the way up to 22. And if you actually look in these, you can see all these little PNG tiles that create your map. And you'll get two HTML outputs. One is open layers, the other is Google Maps. You can see the nice overlay from our converted TIFF file to map tiles. One side note about Google Maps is that you will need to enter an API key in your code. Here's mine. Those are free if you're going to use them for public consumption. Just wanted to mention that and what I've ultimately done is created my own version where I can then track the weekly progress over here. I'll probably add a slider at some point just to make it a little bit more intuitive where you can slide and change the imagery over time. I know this was a long video. I wanted to share the process that I've been using lately to do aerial maps with the Inspire One. I'll continue to share updates as I tweak and try to find the optimal workflow for what I'm doing. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.